stories are more effective. So why don't we use more stories? Why don't we develop more stories? And why don't we use them in strategic settings as well? Um, so let's look at why, why that e evidence has emerged. Why are they more persuasive? And I'll just give you two reasons. One is that they reduce counter-arguing. When you see a set of facts, your inclination is to say, yeah, but. You know, everybody says they got good craftsmanship. You know, steel shank, why should I care? You know, your competitor has uh, rubber bottoms too. And so you, this counter-arguing is really insidious. It really undercut. I mean, this is after you break through the attention barrier, right? That's after you get attention, after you get somebody to process, which is not easy with that kind of content, right? But even if you do, they're going to counter-argue, and you're screwed. You don't counter-argue a story. I mean, it's just a story. There's nothing to argue against. Somebody's just told you a story. Uh, a second major factor is that uh, the audience deduces the, uh, the implication. The audience deduces that the employee is empowered at Nordstrom's. The, the audience deduces that if you, um, you know, if, if, if you're a company the, in the L, L. Bean heritage story that's innovative, that has a passion for the outdoors, and that uh, stands behind its products, um, that it'll probably make good products. And so you, you kind of deduce that for yourself. Nobody is telling you, we make good products. Now, how persuasive is that? But if you, they tell you the story and you deduce, I mean, this is, again, uh, kind of duh. We know since the second grade, if, uh, if somebody lectures at them. We certainly, certainly know it at the Haw School of Business. If somebody lectures at you, it's a tougher learning process than if you figure it out for yourselves. And that's why at the Haw School, we've got all these mechanisms for people to discover it for themselves. Uh, all these group works, the entrepreneur, whole entrepreneur program, and on and on. So uh, stories persuade. So in story sourcing, one thing that we know is there's all kinds of places stories can come from. We've already seen employees, the, the promotion at Molson, the founder at L.L. Bean, the offering at the, as a hero at Blendtec, and the program uh, at Lifeboy, Help a Child Reach Five. And um, uh, uh, let me just give one more example. The uh, uh, the hair story, a guy named uh, Zhang in 1982 was a middle manager at a failing appliance company in, the, in inland China. And the company was literally, I mean, there, it was disgusting. There were rats and, I, and it, was, it was awful. And, uh, and it was, it was going to go get in the Chinese equivalent of bankruptcy then. So they made this middle manager, what do they got to lose? They made him CEO, and they said, good luck. <laughs> and what Zhang did what, what, early in his tenure is a customer came in and said, well, I've got a washing machine that doesn't work. And Zhang said, no problem. Let's go to the inventory, and I'll get you another one that will work. He went to the inventory, and he found that 20% of the appliances were defective, wouldn't work. So what they did, he took those, something like 76 appliances, brought them to the factory store, and got a sledgehammer and smashed them all to pit beats in front of everybody in the, in the company. So that really um, you know, changed the, the whole culture of the company. And they turned around the quality, and then they started innovating. And today, that company is the largest manufacturer of appliances in the world, larger than uh, you know, Maytag and all the rest of them. It's the largest. 
and uh, and it, and Zhang is still running it, and he is, uh, um, you know, still sort of leveraging that story. So you saw uh, the Nordstrom story; it kept alive by itself. It's really an extraordinary thing, but. How do you manage a story to keep it alive? Well, one is you extend the story. You kind of give it more texture. And uh, like L.L. Bean has a lot of things that, that talks about their passion and knowledge about the outdoors. And like uh, something like uh, oh, 20 years after he invented the booty, he has this, he had these publications and one of his quotes was, years of testing shows that eight flies and two sizes are all you need. If salmon don't bite on these, call it a day. That's from Leon Bean. And so you have all this kind of reinforcing and providing texture and enlarging the story. And then you can use symbols. At, at uh, Hayer, there is a, um, uh, outside the home office, there's a sledgehammer. That's the sledgehammer that destroyed those defective appliances. And at L.L. Bean, they have a big statue of the boot outside the home office, and they got a, um, a vehicle boot that, they tra that travels around. So you see that symbol, and you recall the story. 